Hello viewers, I welcome you all to today's lecture on Geiger's law and geiger natal law. All of us know a radioactive nuclei will be highly unstable. To attain stability, these radioactive nuclei could emit alpha particles or beta particles or gamma ray particles. In today's lecture, let us see about alpha particles and when they come out of this radioactive nuclei, how much distance they can travel and what they can do, what is the energy of these alpha particles. So let us discuss all these factors in today's class. The objective of today's topic is to learn about Geiger's law and geiger natal law. The learning outcomes will be that after listening to the class, the learners will be able to define the range of alpha particles, outline the factors upon which the range depends, describe various relations connecting range and velocity of alpha particles. You will be able to explain range energy relation, that is Geiger's law, and discuss geiger natal law. You will be able to draw a conclusion that short-lived isotopes emit more energetic alpha particles. Shall we start our discussion? Before starting, let me say something about the alpha particles. Alpha particle is a heavy charged particle as it contains two protons. They have a large amount of energy, but they are not penetrating. That is, these alpha particles could be easily stopped by ordinary sheet of paper. They have a fairly definite range in a gas liquid or solid. When the radioactive substances emit alpha particles and if we allow these alpha particles to pass through solid medium or liquid medium or gas medium, scientists have observed that alpha particles certainly will be able to travel definite range in this medium. The particle loses energy primarily by colliding with the atoms or molecules of the substance in its path and ionize them. The energy with which the alpha particle ionize the atoms and molecules is called ionization energy. Eventually, its kinetic energy reduces below its ionization energy and loses its ionizing power. So when they come out of the radioactive nuclei, they will be going on colliding with atoms and molecules of the substance in which they are traveling and they ionize. What do you mean by ionization? Removal of electrons from the atom. So they just go on ionize and after a certain time they lose the energy and no more they can ionize other atoms and molecules in the substance. The distance traveled by this alpha particle is called the range. Definition, range of alpha particles. The range of alpha particles is defined as the distance which these particles travel through A at 76 centimeters of mercury pressure and 15 degrees Celsius temperature before they lose their energy to the extent that they no longer ionize the gas particles. The range of alpha particles depend upon the following factors. The initial velocity with which alpha particles escaping from the radioactive nuclei. Second thing, it depends on the nature of radioactive element. Many radioactive elements are there. So from which radioactive element the alpha particle is coming out, that is also it matters. The nature and pressure of the gas or nature of the medium in which they travel. Now, 
let us discuss about Geiger's law. This Geiger's law relates range of alpha particle with energy of the alpha particle. According to Geiger, the range of alpha particle is proportional to cube of their velocity. Range is proportional to cube of their velocity or range equal to a b cube where a is a constant and v is the velocity with which the particle is traveling. This relation is exact when the velocity is within limits corresponding to the range between 3 and 8 centimeter. When the velocity has a certain limit, it could describe this much range in that medium. When the velocity is lower than this limit, then r is proportional to v power 3 by 2. And for velocities, when it is greater than this limit, then r is proportional to v power 4. So here itself we say three types of formula. r is proportional to v cube, r is proportional to v power 3 by 2, r is proportional to v power 4. Very clearly telling the range depends on the velocity with which it is coming out of the radioactive nuclei. We know the kinetic energy of alpha particle is given by half mv square. If you represent kinetic energy as e, then from this formula we can find out v equal to square root of 2e by m. The range of alpha particle, therefore, r equal to a into in the place of v you substitute square root of 2e by m power q. This is from equation 1. Here we have shown that r equal to a v q. The same relation only we are writing a into v. v is this expression we have substituted power 3. So let us say here r equal to a of square root of 2e by m power 3. Now, you take 2 pi m outside. You have a of 2 pi m power 3 by 2. e power 3 by 2. So, a of 2 pi m power 3 by 2. If you keep it by another constant, you can write range equal to b e power 3 by 2. Where b is a constant. This is the range energy relation or the other name is Geiger's law. As Geiger's law is valid within certain ranges of velocity, a universal relation between range and energy does not exist. Thus, with the help of experimental based observations, Geiger has given a fairly suitable relation connecting range and energy. Next, let us see Geiger Nutter law. Before knowing this law, let us define dk constant lambda. dk constant lambda determines the rate of dk of the radioactive nuclei. Geiger Nuttall law relates this decay constant lambda of radioactive isotope with the energy of alpha particles emitted. It states that sharp-lived isotopes emit more energetic alpha particles than long-lived isotopes. Geiger and Natal measured the range of alpha particles emitted by several radioactive substances. They found for an alpha emitting radioactive substance, the logarithm of decay constant lambda and the logarithm of range R in A of the emitted alpha rays are in linear relation to each other. So, Geiger and Nuttall measured the range of alpha particles emitted by 
many radioactive substances they found that there exists a linear relation between decay constant and the range the linear relation is given by log lambda equal to a plus b log r a graph is plotted between log lambda and log r for various radioactive substances emitting alpha particles for three series here radium series usually it starts with uranium and ends at lead this second series is named as thorium series it starts with thorium and ends at lead and the other one is actinium series it starts with the element actinium and ends at lead that means all the three series final end element is lead because lead is a stable element and it has the atomic number as magic number for all three series the curves are almost parallel not exactly parallel but almost parallel so that b is same for all series and a is different for different series where a is the intercept the three lines have on log r axis so this previous relation we have log lambda equal to a plus b log r this is somewhat a linear relation so here b gives you slope so as the three series are parallel to each other b remains the same so b is same for all the three series whereas if you extend this line to meet the log or axis they meet at a different points so you see a is different for different series so from this graph we can find some inferences for each series when the disintegration constant lambda is high the range is also high don't take the three series together individually you have to see so here lambda is high so the range is also high for radium series when lambda is low range is low when lambda is here range is increasing this is the highest decay constant lambda for that r happens to be maximum same way for the second series when lambda is small range is small for the third series lambda is small range is also more so for each series when the disintegration constant is high the range is also high the second inference is that the range depends upon energy therefore if range is small then energy of the alpha particles emitted will be high for each series so when lambda is high range is high when range is high energy is high so simply we say that the elements which have decay constant lambda high they will emit alpha particles with high energy the time required for half of the original population of radioactive atoms to decay is for half life for example 1 gram of uranium you take in that if 50 percentage of the atoms of 1 gram substance how much time it takes to decay that time is called half life the half life period can be related with the decay constant with this formula t half equal to 0.693 by lambda so t half is low that means those radioactive elements are short lived if t half is high then those radioactive elements are long lived now for short lived radioactive elements your lambda is very high so just now we say if lambda is high range is high if range is high energy is high so we say short lived radioactive nuclei 
will emit alpha particles of very high energy. That is the conclusion from this graph. So, short-lived isotopes emit more energetic alpha particles than long-lived isotopes. Thus, we have studied Geiger and Geiger Natal law. I hope you have understood. Thank you all.